Okay, hey guys, I'm gonna do my best to explain edges, so uh, maybe talk a little bit about platforms too and and a couple other things, but <clears throat> um, with, with the edges, <clears throat> one of the most important things in my opinion is to know that you need enough edge thickness for the for the flake to initiate um, and it the thickness of your flake will depend a lot upon the thickness of your edge if you have a really thin edge uh, it it doesn't give that crack much room in there inside the stone to um, form that bulb of percussion and level out and and take a nice flake um, but when you have a little more edge thickness the the crack a lot of times it'll either initiate right straight from the edge or just above the edge and it'll take a little concentric concentric bite out of the the edge of the piece and that little that little semicircular crack where the where the flake initiates there on the edge is called uh, the ring ring crack i think is what they call it especially over like with the old world napping and um blade cores and stuff like that that's i think that's called a ring crack so that's where the flake initiates and then you know if you don't have that thickness on your edge there's just not enough material in there for that flake to to form that bulb of percussion and then level out and right along under the surface. Um, so, you know, it, it helps to have a little bit of thickness on your edge. And a lot of times you can, you can do that just by a little rake down, um, back and forth and it'll It'll take your edge in a little bit and get rid of that real fine edge. That way your flake can initiate and uh, and get a hold of enough material where it, where it takes a good successful removal. Um, another thing is you want to kind of time the time your edge thickness. Um, let's see how can I explain this a little better. Um, you want to preserve your edge thickness to a certain point um, and what I usually do is I'll preserve my thickness on my edges as much as I can during my initial thinning and reduction process and then as I get a little closer to what I want uh, then you can can your, you know you get closer to your final shape then you can can start thinning your edges out and uh, getting them closer to the final thinness that you want. Um, but if you think about it, if you're trying to take a flake from a really thin edge from this point out here, you know, there's some stuff that's gotta happen for that flake to be, to take off and be successful. Um, and it's, it's just, it's hard for that to happen when it's really thin like this, it, that, that flake's got to go in there and form the bold percussion and then, and then run out. It can be done. I mean, there's, there's people that are a lot better than I am at flaking thin edges, but, uh, it's much easier if you have a little bit of thickness out here. And the one thing that's very helpful, uh, depending on, uh, no matter what edge you you're working with is in my opinion it's helpful to uh, say if you get a knife edge like that so we're looking at this thing uh, like from here okay um, a lot of times if you just take a rake down with your braider or rake up depending on which way you're wanting to turn your edge to roll it off get rid of this little pointy part so if i'm taking a flake 
down like this and I want to remove all on this side, I want the very edge of this to abruptly turn down towards the edge I'm taking the flake from. So instead of having a pointy edge here, just if the very edge of that is rolled down this way, okay? Now, if it's, if it's rolled up the other way, like this, and you try to hit that thing and take a flake right there, it's just gonna break your edge off and just cause all kind of damage. And that, that's really imp important so, a lot of times that'll make a flake go bad if it's if it's just the very edge of it is is turned up instead of turned down, you know. And you hit that, it it can mess you up if you're hitting this way and you've got that that edge turned up up in the air. It's not gonna go good. You want to be hitting at it from this side with that edge turned down. Even if it's just the very edge, uh, you know, just the, the very knife edge, and you you still want to roll that over towards the edge that you're removing the flake from. I hope that makes sense, because I think a lot of flakes fail. <clears throat> I see a, a lot of guys um, on YouTube and stuff, they'll hit an edge that's, that's kind of got the wrong turn on it, and it'll just, you know, step or fail or whatever. Um, so timing your thickness is is important, like I was saying. You know, once I start getting down to my final shape and preform, I'm not so worried about preserving all that thickness. You know, I can go ahead and, and take my final thinning flakes and get that nice thin edge and then, and then start in on it with pressure. Um, as far as preparing, preparing your edges, as you know, what I usually do is just start in and taking a few small flakes on a, if I'm working a new material and, you know, if the edge is crushing with that particular tool or technique that I'm using, I'll, um, I'll usually either try to grind my edges a little more or I'll use a softer tool, a softer tool tip or a, a more gentle technique, method, slower swing speed, maybe a heavier mass billet. Um, there's lots of different things that you can try when, you're, when your edges are failing um, and you're breaking stepping flakes and stuff. So, um, the, you know, the edges are, are super important. And whether you're striking off a, just a continuous platform, a continuous edge, and getting those flakes to release and pop off, or you're isolating platforms. Uh, either way, you can, uh, you know, you want to pay attention to your edges. So, um, what I what I did in the, in the beginning, I would have a preform. And what I would do is basically just turn this, I would turn my whole edge um, down. So I would rake it one, one direction or the other. You know, say I'm wanting to take flakes, um, you know, off, off this side right here. Then I'll, I'll rake. And a lot of times if, if you, instead of raking straight across your edge this way, if you kind of come across it from the top like this, it'll it'll work a little better. It'll take uh, more little tiny flake removals, and it'll it'll roll that edge. Um, you know, it'll it'll roll it down so you can strike on that on that beefier part of the edge and get that that flake to release and run. Um, so a lot of times that's all you need to do, but that's that's exactly what I did in the beginning. I just would, and I still do that a lot. Um, when you do that, you bevel your whole edge 
you have a continuous platform, then you can either start at one end or the other with with small flake removals. Um, another thing, let's see. Let me get off. Don't let me get off track here. Um, isolating platforms. So if if you do st uh, set a continuous platform, a continuous edge, and then you take a flake up here, and you can work into your mass uh, gradually, working your way down the blade with larger flakes and larger flakes, um, like that. Or you can take, say, you take a flake here, uh, then this is kind of low in here, so you take a flake, you skip down a ways and take a flake here. So then that lowers this and this, so that raises this this up, so you can get a, get a flake here now. Flakes always like raised areas. Um, that's in line with the edge, or not in line with the edge, but perpendicular to the edge. Um, raised areas leading into the workpiece. So ridges, basically. But not necessarily ridges, just raised areas. If if a if the surface has a raised area like this, uh, in, instead of just a, a solid surface, that flake is going to remove this so much easier, and it's going to go so much better because the flake has a place to uh, the the crack has a place to go. So it's there's no resistance. If you take a flake on a flat surface, that crack has to find its, you know, it's traveling through here when it's going through the stone like this and it, it has to find its way out. So now that flake has, has to stress sometimes and, and come up to the, the surface. And a lot of times you'll see little, um, little hash marks or fissures where the flake kind of tore out, and that means it's stressing. It's not, that flake's, uh, it's not releasing as easy as it could if you're seeing those those marks. And, you know, when you have a raised area, that crack comes out and it breaks, you know, and it doesn't have any, it's not stealing any energy from the flake. You know, that, that thing just takes off and, and runs down this down this ridge here. There's no resistance pulling and stressing the flake and, and robbing it of energy. So it's just all, it just pops off there a lot easier, basically. Um, when you're flaking on a raised area or a ridge. And that's really important to, you know, to have that in, your, in the back of your mind when you're making these removals. Um, you know, if you give a flake, even if it's only on one side, if you give it a down slope or a place to the, for the crack to initiate, uh, that flake's just going to go a lot, a lot smoother, and it'll remove more mass. And I, I'll work into mass a lot of times like that, just, just a little at a time. I'll, you know, take one flake and then. So the flake actually is stressing on this side with all the mass, but it's cracking real clean over here where, you know, where that, where that contour drops off. It's cracking clean there, but it's, you know, it has to tear out up here. But that doesn't really matter because then you move down a little bit and you take another flake here and you, and you just work into the mass that way. I hope some of this is making sense. I know I'm not doing a very good job illustrating it on this board, but um, you know, a lot of it's common sense, but it really helps to to know, you know, what's going on on a on a small scale. Um, you know, you can always use surface support and make your help your flakes go a little further and and deeper. Um, 
you don't want to use surface support with your fingers or soft leather or on your leg pad when you got a, a big flat area you're you're flaking into uh, that doesn't have any convexity you know it's it's especially if it's got a concavity in it um, you know you think about that it's just that flake the way it way it wants to run it's wanting out it's it's wanting to come up to the surface here and that flake only has so much stored energy and you can only transfer so much energy through a really thin edge and and get it to carry through the stone um so when a flake is running into more mass and it runs out of energy uh with especially if you're taking it with you have prying forces coming up this direction uh, that flake will, it'll, when it hits that mass, it just breaks. That's the easiest thing for it to do. It's just, just break off. And that's where you get your step fractures. You know, snaps. Um, so, what else can I say with edges? You know, the same thing pretty much applies for the pressure or percussion. You know, you just, you just want to have enough thickness for that flake to work. You know, the, the main thing is realizing that you can't, you can't get a big thick flake off a really super thin edge unless you're, you know, Jason Newman or something. Um, and, and platforms, as far as, uh, striking smaller areas on the edges, you know, that's, well, all this really is just, you're going to have to familiarize yourself with it. And um, it's just like the rest of it. You just get familiar with with what you can hit without failing and, and crushing and what you, what you can and can't and uh, do. And, you know, there's a certain amount of work that you just have to do hands-on yourself to realize how this how this stuff works so um anyways i hope that was helpful i don't know if all the lead up to the video was if i delivered or not but uh, you know that's the the stuff that's most important to me and and seems to have helped me out uh, more than anything else as far as with you know edges go so um, you know, preserve that thickness on your edge. You gotta have it to get those nice flakes. Don't, don't go, uh, you know, right off the bat, don't, don't try to make these, these really thin knife edges and thin pieces because, you know, you're just gonna get yourself in trouble. You'll start stepping flakes when you're losing your convexity and, um, it'll just, it'll all start going downhill so preserve your edge thickness you know you want want a little bit of that edge to that thickness out on the edge so those flakes can work right so i hope that helps guys um let me know if you have any any other questions about about edges and uh grinding i'm sure there's lots of other stuff i can go over so uh let me know thanks hope that helps see you next time